and its wisdom can help us develop better relationships. So I'll speak based on the Bhagavad Gita chapter 12, text 15. It's one of the simplest and yet the sweetest verses of the Bhagavad Gita in terms of its practical application. I'll explain the meaning and then we'll discuss the verse. Is this visible to everyone behind? Okay, let's see if I... So, Krishna is telling over here, Yasman no dvijate loko By whom people are not disturbed. Lokan no dvijate chaya One who is not disturbed by people and one who does not disturb people. Such a person... Harsha Marsha Vayodvegair. The various kinds of disturbances. There is jubilation, harsha, amarsha is rejection. Bhaya, fear, insecurity. And then Udvega. Udvega is overall agitation, he says. When these are not mukto, when one is free from these, Yaha Sacha Me Priyaha. So essentially Krishna is telling that in our life, if we don't disturb others and are not disturbed by others then that will endear us to him. That is a characteristic of a good or a, great, a good or great devotee of Krishna. So let's recite the verse. Yasmano dvijate loko Lokano dvijate chayaha Harsha marsha bhayo dvegair Mukto ya sacha me priyaha Yasmano dvijate loko Lokano dvijate chayaha Harsha marsha bhayo dvegai Mukto ya sacha me priyaha. Yasmano dvijate loko. Lokano dvijate chaya. Harsha marsha bhayo dvegair. Mukto ya sacha me priyaha. Anyone else? Okay, that's gone off. I have to pull it a little closer. Okay. Yeah, anyone else? Yasmano dvijate loko Lokano dvijate Yasmano dvijate loko Lokano dvijate chaya Harsha marsha bhayo dvegai Mukto ya sacha me priyaha Thank you. So, let's see what Krishna is telling us in this verse and how it can help us understand and improve our relationship with each other. So essentially, if we are depicting this verse, what Krishna is saying is that two people assume 
So the nature of the world is that sometimes we disturb others. The way we act, the way we speak, what we do, we disturb others. And others also disturb us. And in general, because of this, happening repeatedly, our life itself becomes disturbed. We have a disturbed life and at large, the world also becomes disturbed. So, while this is the natural way things can happen, Krishna is saying that if, while functioning with each other, we don't disturb others, and we are not disturbed by others. Then he says, now what the other person does is not in our control. But what we do is very much in our control. So if we consider above all of us is Krishna, then if we can do this, then we please Krishna. We become dear to Krishna. So, let's try to understand, this is something which is interesting. Krishna is not saying so much that, okay, you, if you chant my holy names, if you come to a temple regularly, if you do puja, that pleases me. Yes, that is true, no doubt. But in this particular section of the Bhagavad Gita, the chapter 12 of the Bhagavad Gita is called as Bhakti Yoga. And in this chapter, it's one of the shortest chapters, there's 20 verses. This and chapter 15, both of them have 20 verses each. They're the shortest chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. And yet both of them are extremely power-packed chapters. So in the last section of this chapter, text 13 to 20, Krishna talks about the qualities that endear a devotee to him. That is being talked about in this section. And here right in the middle, in the 15th text, that's where we are at right now. Krishna is speaking that if we don't disturb others and others don't disturb us, then that endures us to him. Now, it's in, now broadly speaking, we understand Krishna is talking about devotees. But in the previous verses, in each verse, Krishna explicitly mentions, Yo mad bhakta sacha me priyaha. Such a devotee is dear to me. Bhakti man yaha such a me priyaha. Such a devotee is the one who is enriched with devotion is dear to me. But Krishna in this particular verse doesn't even mention bhakti. That he is simply saying, Mukto yaha such a me priyaha. That means Krishna is saying, even an ordinary person who lives in this world in a way that that person does not disturb others and is not disturbed by others. That will also be pleasing to Krishna. That will also be endearing to Krishna. Of course, if a devotee does this, it's so much more. So, let's try to look at this from a few different perspectives of why might we disturb others? And why might we be disturbed by others? And then we can say how we can avoid that. So generally, when two people connect with each other, if we may connect for professional purposes, we, we work together as colleagues, we may connect with each other formally as, as acquaintances, but in those particular relations, there's not so much disturbance. But the closer the relationship, the greater is the potential for mutual disturbance. If we consider the wounds that we get in our relationships, they don't generally come from strangers. It is from the people who are closest to us, they can hurt us the most. So what can we do about it? So in general, wherever there is, two people can relate with each other, especially it's a close relationship. Means it's a relationship based on love. Now, love can be not just romantic love, it can be parental love, it can be fraternal love, it can be various kinds of love can be there. But 
that is the time when relationship comes close to each other the relationships are quite close and that is the time when there is a greater potential for being hurt so now what does the word love itself mean we'll try to look at it from a deeper relational perspective and then we will see how if we infuse this understanding with bhakti then we can enrich our relationships and stabilize them more so when we talk about love it can mean multiple things love at one level can mean attraction so for example if we consider a relation i am in love with you or x y z is in love with a b c what that means is that there is a very strong attraction now we may use the word infatuation sometimes which is which it may be but love can refer to at one level attraction now at another level love can also mean expectation suppose somebody says you don't love me anymore now what does that mean that means that person is saying i expect you to do certain things which would be expressions of love and those expressions are no longer coming and that's why i feel that you don't love me anymore so love can be what we feel for the other person love can also refer to what we feel from the other person what we feel for the other person is attraction what we feel from the other person is some expectation we have and if that expectation is not fulfilled then we feel there is no love now beyond that love can also be a decision that often this talk about love is not just a noun it's also a verb it can be conscious decision to commit oneself to a particular relationship and we'll talk about how this applies these various definitions apply to our mutual relationships they also apply to our relationship with krishna and we'll see how both of these can be integrated together and finally love can also refer to a state of sublime satisfaction so when when we feel loved then we feel safe we feel secure we feel satisfied so when a person is using the word love they can mean many different things and what is being meant and how it is applied that's something which needs to be understood so if we consider now if we apply the same to devotion now devotion at one level is also a form of love but generally it we refer to devotion as love directed to the divine to krishna now within that also we have certain we have multiple meanings of this word so for example love as a devotion as attraction means somebody has great devotion you see that means they just long to come to a temple they feel as if i'm pulled to go to a temple i'm pulled to go to a holy place i feel something pulling me towards kirtan hmm? so that's attraction but devotion even a bhakti in in the direction of bhakti also devotion can mean some expectation now expectation could be that our prayers are answered but expectation could also be that you know when i come to a temple when i chant the holy names i should feel some peace i should feel some joy and if i don't feel that then i think you know do i have any devotion and if the devotion is not felt then we say no does krishna exist is krishna unhappy with me is krishna angry with me does krishna no longer care for me anymore so in devotion also there is some expectation now devotion can also be a decision means i am going to practice bhakti that means what i am going to take up the i am going to make the decision see of chanting the holy names 
or coming to satsang or having altar at my home and doing some puja regularly so bhakti can also be a devotion can also refer to a decision and then devotion also refers to satisfaction in fact when we feel connected with krishna through devotion that gives us a sublime sense of satisfaction now satisfaction and attraction can seem similar but the two are significantly different its attraction is what we feel toward the other person but satisfaction is what we feel overall in the relationship i feel that so i'm using the word satisfaction here more in the sense of security so we feel a sense of security in our relationship with krishna and in some ways the four things that krishna talks about in the verse that we just now discussed they are they refer to broadly these things now when there is attraction we feel harsha in the presence of that person when we see that person we just feel kind of jubilation over there we feel so much joy so it and two people are in a close relationship as soon as they see the other person maybe their eyes light up their face like face gleams so that's at harsh i feel that that's attraction at the same time you know when we expect something from some person and that person doesn't do that and then that expectation is not fulfilled then there is amarsha amarsha is dejection so if the hell is not fulfilled then there is amarsha a uh, few things can cause dejection and heartbreak as much as as unfulfilled or frustrated expectations and then when i talk about satisfaction or security that is bhaya so when we are in a relationship but we are not sure how the relationship is going then we start thinking we start feeling some insecurity some fear and that f- there are over the centuries not over the decades yeah over, as far as we know over the centuries psychologists have tried to find out what are the top 10 fears of people mm-hmm. and in the 21st century there were two new entrants in the top 10 list one was the fear of terrorists mm-hmm. terror as we know it it really s- took a prominent place in the public imagination after 9/11 before that it was there but it was not that prominent so one is fear of terrorism and the second is the fear of rejection in the past relationships in the previous century relationships were relatively stabler so okay once somebody is married okay that relationship will go on for life that was general idea but now fear of rejection is constantly there so that is bhaya so harsha amarsha bhaya and there is udvega so overall un- in any relationship unless we make it a decision that this is what i am going to commit myself to okay stand is not very committed to standing <laughs> i think we need to Im- imbalances there over here so the wire is coming over there that's right is that the problem no okay thank you uh, this is can you hear me now or no are you able to hear me okay so when as long as the decision is not there then there will be udvega udvega is basically agitation caused by restlessness so in one sense indirectly these various aspects of the dynamics in the relationship are being hinted by the kind of disturbances that may be there in relationship and krishna is talking about these things harsha marsha bhayo dvegair so to put it in just more visual terms my love can refer to what i feel for you that's attraction 
and second is what i feel from you that's i feel that you are taking care of me you are attending to me you are you not doing that and then love can also refer to the overall you could say it's like a the decision a person makes that's that's the third aspect of it and then love can also refer to the broader state that one experiences in the relationship itself there is a sense of satisfaction in the relationship so disturbances can come from various sources so either we may say that we feel discontented disturbed in the relationship because i don't feel any more attraction you don't fulfill my expectations that my decision to be in this relationship itself is becoming weak and overall there is no satisfaction over here now any of these can happen and these can cause the relationship to be disturbed so what do we do about this the bhagavad gita states that ultimately mamai vaam sho jeeva loke jeeva bhutah sanatanah that each one of us is eternally a part of krishna so at one level we can say that krishna exists above all of us and i am a part of krishna the other part person is a part of krishna we are all amsha we are parts of krishna and to the extent we understand that we are parts of krishna what that means is that our primary relationship is with krishna and why because that is our eternal relationship it is at the level of the body we have functional relationship with different people and they are important while they are there but they are temporary relationships and in general when we are forming relationships if there is no god in the picture we are by nature relational creatures we are social creatures we need relationships so there is a longing of the heart that only krishna can fulfill but when krishna is downplayed or sidelined in a relationship then we invest in somebody else the hope the expectation that only krishna can fulfill and that sets us up for frustration so put it another way now if say i am here and krishna is here so i and the other person so i have a relationship with krishna i have a relationship with the other person and the other person has a relationship with krishna so we could say my relationship with krishna is one my relationship with the other person is two and their relationship with krishna is three so now there are these three relationships and if it happens that krishna is removed from the picture then it's only here then what is happening is the there is a certain expectation in this relationship and there is certain expectation in this relationship but both of these become expected from the other person and that kind of expectation is impossible for anyone to fulfill so in general frustration that we may feel frustration dissatisfaction that is a function of expectation the greater the expectation we have the greater the frustration we feel in a particular relationship or in a particular situation so if you come to a program and you are told that there's going to be a feast and okay and after the program there is simple only khichdi okay then what happened okay so that the khichdi itself might be nicely made the khichdi might be delicious 
but because the expectation was set at a particular level, so when there is frustration of expectation, then there is greater disappointment. Mm -hmm. So, but okay, there's a program and there's some prasad after the program. And we okay, chari, okay, taste me, this is nicely made. There's satisfaction. So what has happened is as as God has been more and more sidelined in human society, the amount of expectations people have from each other have proportionately increased. And when that, those expectations are not fulfilled, then the result of that is, you just say, okay, there is, uh, what do you do? Maybe relationships can't be, can't be satisfied, relationships are not satisfactory at all. I was in America and there was a car bumper where it is written, the more I get to know people, the more I love my dog. <laughs> the more I get to know people, that means I find people are always disappointing, people always let us down. So, better don't care about people at all. The more I, I just love my dog. So, often the affection that a person might have for another person is transferred to a dog. I was in... Uh, we have an eco-village in India, Govardhan Eco Village is the United Nations award winning center for sustainable development. So there every December, January, hundreds of people from all over the world, especially the Western world, they come for for experiencing the spirituality and learning more about yoga. Often people who are themselves yoga teachers, they come to go deeper into the yoga tradition. So I was there and I was talking with various people and one person said, okay, I'm a Doga teacher. I said, I thought, you're, you're wrong? You mean a yoga teacher? He says, no, Doga teacher. I said, what exactly is Doga? So he says, Doga is yoga with dogs. So the idea is that <laughs> people want to do everything with their dog. So I googled and saw actually it's a big thing. So that, okay, you know, I am going to do some asana and my yoga trainer will teach my dog also to do the same asanas. Okay, I spread my hands, the dog also spreads its paws. You know, if I, st I go into a, uh, in a particular posture, my dog also goes in that posture. So, uh, there is a doga teacher and conversely there is also a koga teacher. So, what is koga? Cats. Cats, yeah. So, now what has happened is, the, the point is that we, if we can't, if we remove God from their life, then we try to direct all that hope and expectation to humans. And if humans don't fulfill that, then we direct that hope and expectation towards animals, towards pets. Now, pets can, pets, we can have affection for all living beings in fact. But, to make some, someone uh, the central object of our affection, now that is something which has to be done with greater discretion. And what, sorry. So what the Bhagavad Gita explains is that because we are eternally parts of Krishna, so we have an eternal relationship with him. And in that relationship, the satisfaction, the contentment, the enrichment, the joy that we can experience, we can't experience that anywhere else. So, how does this apply if we understand this point that we should, we don't want to get disturbed. On one side, if we get disturbed and we say, I just don't want any relationship at all. And I just, just try to find some substitutes. But if we want healthy relationships, how do we go about doing this? So, I'll talk about two main points and then we will stop and we can have some questions. So, the first is that... For if we want, I talk about this three, one, two, three. It's vital that we give due time for our relationship with Krishna. So one has to be a proper priority in our life. Because what happens when we are connected with Krishna internally, then we get a certain level of steadiness. 
a certain level of stability because krishna is unchanging krishna is ever present like an anchor within us with us so generally in life there is always going to be ups and downs as they say kabhi khushi kabhi gham so that's going to happen now for some people when these ups and downs happen what happens is the result of that is internally there's a huge up and a huge down hmm? it's like one day is if you go to a job and you know, the boss speaks some nice encouraging words and says i love this job this is the best job in the world and the next day maybe the boss gives some feedback you know and if you know i hate this job it's a terrible job so what has happened is the external duality has been multiplied magnified internally or sometimes people say that one day they will say i love you i can't live without you and maybe a few days later i can't live with you so it just goes to great extremes up and down up and down so in the outer world there are dualities but they can get magnified internally and then that can make small problems unnecessarily big we all have probably experiences you know we know some friends some family members they are at loggerheads with each other they are fighting with each other and then we wonder what's you know what's the issue and when they tell the issue we may not say it publicly it's just a small thing why did you make it so big but for them it is it has very become very big because their mind has magnified it so if this happens this can be unhealthy it can also not just be unhealthy it can even be catastrophic this can sometimes in extreme situations it can destroy relationships but a far healthier situation would be in life there are always going to be ups and downs but if we are sheltered in our relationship with krishna we have internal stability through our relationship with krishna then what the other person does or does not do won't disturb us so much why because that person is not the sole center of our life or our universe okay this is a relationship it's a important relationship but i have my shelter in krishna so in this way if we have our connection with krishna then we won't be disturbed by others what the other person does most of the times in a close relationships generally people are not malevolent people are not deliberately out to hurt the other person we understand you know we we have to live together we have this long term relationship we have to function so it's not that people deliberately want to hurt each other but sometimes it happens now sometimes if the anger is too much then maybe occasionally uh, something is spoken harshly but overall it is helpful to when things are getting escalated to lower the temperature and that happens through our so if our one this is strong that means our relationship between krishna and us is strong then what will happen by that is is that visible okay that's not visible so if this is krishna and this is i so now if this one is strong then if we are strengthened and sheltered in our relationship with krishna then in this relationship with the other person this two there will be stability at least from our side that person may disturb us but our relationship with krishna this strong relationship with krishna that will act like a buffer for us so this is a buffer means even if the other person 
No, they do something disturbing. Hmm? It's coming, but by the time it comes inside us, it has become much smaller. Like when we have a buffer or a, when we are in a car and we have a shock absorber. Then the road might have bumps. But if the shock absorber is there, we don't get so much bumped by it. But if there is no shock absorber, then any bump on the road, we feel jerked. Sometimes it can be violent, even injurious jerks can be there. So for us, how strongly we stay connected with Krishna can determine the stability of our relationship with them. Of, of how much we are affected by what they go through in life. Now on the other side, so one side is, don't be disturbed by others. Now of course this does not mean that if the other person is being abusive or something like that, then we just tolerate it. Uh, then we may have to take some action for mitigation. But even that will be taken from a place of inner security. That won't be taken from a place of fear or vengefulness or vindictiveness. And how do we ensure that we don't disturb others? So, you know, I was at, I was trying to do a mediation between two people once. And the first person said to the other person that, um, I, know you, I know you are angry with me. He said, no, I am not angry with you. Sometimes people say that in the tone, no, I am not angry with you. He said, anger is an expensive emotion and you are not worth it. <laughs> now, if somebody has that dismissive or dehumanizing an attitude, then it's going to be very difficult to repair the relationship. So ideally speaking, not ideally speaking, even practically speaking, we, we need to rectify things before they go down to that level. So sometimes we are so fed up in a particular relationship that we get joy that we just we just become very cynical and bitter. Mm -hmm. I saw one cartoon where you know one two two brothers are fighting, and one brother is saying, to the other, "Why are you yelling at me?" And the other brother saying, "Because that is the only pleasure in this relationship." <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a terrible place to be in. So we need to repair the relationship long before we come to that place. So how can we ensure that we don't disturb others? Wow. Okay. That's fine. It's okay. So mm. now here, what happens is, if say we have certain expectation from the other person and that expectation is not being fulfilled. Then we feel that, you know, that person is not doing the right thing. And I have the right to disturb that person. Because that person is going on the wrong track. And yeah, there might be some truth to that. But here, when we are trying to correct someone because we feel that they are going on the wrong track. It's important that we try to do it in a way that instead of correct, when we correct them, it should not severe our connection with them. Sometimes the correction, what happens is the correction is something which we give and when we, when we correct someone, what happens is, that person's response is, yad gatva nanivartanti. That person goes and doesn't come back at all. Sometimes people are not able to take feedback. Mm. So one of my friends tell me that, so before I give feedback, I always do feed front. You know, give a lot of nice prashad. <laughs> so now what has happened, he, now sometimes you try to follow a formula regularly, so now, the people around him, he says, whenever he brings some nice prasad for you, <laughs> you know that after that some chastisement is going to come. <laughs> so there is no formula that we can use, 
to to smoothen relationships it ultimately has to come from the heart hmm? but if a person is doing something which we think is is harmful then it is to some extent our responsibility to correct them but at the same time when we talk about cor correcting someone now when we disturb others it could be very about various things but i am focusing on one thing when we feel that we need to correct others now one is our responsibility and the second is our capacity both need to be considered our responsibility means you know is it my place to correct someone now so for example if we are parents and we have children and if a child is doing something wrong then it to some extent it's a parent's responsibility yeah. one of the most important words that a growing child needs to hear a small child as a child is growing is no no you can't do this if a child is eating food on the dining table with his siblings and say the food in his plate gets over and a child starts grabbing food from the other sibling's plate now the parents may have to tell you want more food you can get more food but don't take from his or her plate the parents say oh what does it matter it's all in the family only but if the child does not learn boundaries then imagine 20 20 years down the line the child is the, the child has become a young man is working in a company and there's a corporate dinner and then suddenly the person starts grabbing from somebody else's plate oh that would be a disgrace so it's important to teach boundaries so to some extent sometimes we have to correct others but when we are correcting others if we see that my correction is a part of my service to krishna that means see i am the well wisher of this person but krishna is the ultimate well wisher of this person so what happens is now even if that person is not not necessarily practicing bhakti but if i think that oh it is i am going to correct this person see the way it is is all wisdom comes from krishna as the super soul in our hearts so now krishna is the super soul in my heart krishna is the super soul in your heart so i might understand okay this is something wrong and this needs to be corrected but when if some thought comes from krishna to me and from me to you hmm, so i and the other person then at that time you start thinking you know this person is instructing maybe i should listen maybe i should not listen but because it's your idea it's your suggestions your instruction and all the dynamic of the relationship comes in and should i do this should i not do this but if say that same thought is coming from within their hearts from krishna oh this is my idea i shouldn't do this i should do this then that person when the, it comes this way there is sometimes some reservation hmm? reservation or hesitation in doing this but here when it comes there is conviction the same thought comes from krishna within that person then there is conviction so what we need to do when we are trying to connect when we are trying to correct someone that is the time when we sometimes need to disturb others so at that time the key point is not so much there are in a relationship you know there is a right thing to do the right thing to do in the relationship and then there is the right thing and the right spirit to maintain so if we don't just instruct others but we explain okay do this why do you do this we develop they help them develop their intelligence so when there is communication 
Now generally if there is instruction and then there is vision. Instruction means do this and don't do this. And you say, who are you to tell me do this and don't do this? Now, vision means, you know, yeah, can you, can you look at it from this perspective? Like, I am seeing it like this, can you see it like this? We offer the glasses to them. We tell somebody, don't go there. Why are you telling me don't go there? You know, just see, I can see from this path, down the line, there's a big ditch over there. And you'll fall in that. If we try to see that our purpose is not just to correct others. Our purpose is to connect others. Not just with ourselves at a deeper level, but connect others with Krishna. Now Krishna says that buddhir buddhimatamasmi, I am the intelligence of the intelligent. So when we are trying to, if we have to disturb others, that disturbance can be made as less disturbing as possible, if we see it as our service to, to develop that person's intelligence. So don't just give instruction, give vision. That means give an explanation. This is to be done because of this, this, this. Then that person starts seeing, oh yeah, this makes sense. As their intelligence starts developing, then they connect with Krishna. And when they come to the conclusion by their own deliberation, then they will do it with greater conviction. So, if we are to disturb others less, then one of the ways to do it is to try to see that I don't have to do the job of God in their relationship. That I don't have to be their God and protect them from everything. No, God is there for that. As an assistant of God, I have to do some things. As a servant of God, I have to do some things. But sometimes some people learn from experience. And now we may say, you know, why do you have to go through the experience? I can give you wisdom. But, I, but sometimes the wisdom that we give, that won't persuade them much. But if they learn from their experience, then that is what will persuade them. So now when they go through that experience, it is Krishna who teaches them through that experience. So I'll conclude with one example of this particular dynamic. That how sometimes... In a relationship, the way we can disturb others minimum is the way we can help them grow. If we disturb them too much, the relationship breaks down. Or sometimes the same person who we thought, you know, I have done so much for you. But then at one particular point, we give them some, uh, some negative feedback and they think it is too heavy. And then that person turns against us only. And leave alone being grateful for what we had done for them. That person feels that, oh, you are dominating me. And you are my, you are trying to be my boss, you are trying to be my controller. And they start bad, bad mouthing us. So then what happens is, we end up disturbing them and they end up disturbing us. So sometimes, it is important that we let people learn lessons at their pace. So Srila Prabhupada at times would be very strong in correcting others. But at other times Srila Prabhupada would be very cautious. And one time one devotee was, trying, was planning to do book distribution in a particular way. He was very enthusiastic. And there's another devotee, much more experienced. He said, you know, Prabhupada, we tried distribution this way, it doesn't work. So, I told him, but he's not listening to me. Can you tell it to him? He says, so enthusiastic, I don't want him to be disappointed. And he'll waste so much time and energy. If he just does it this way, which we have learned, then things will move forward very nicely. And so that, that point was that the Prabhupada, the devotee further said that you know, maybe we should make a seminar and we should tell people when we are say distributing Bhagavad Gita and other books, these are the lines you can speak. If you speak this line, the people are attracted. If you speak this line, people are not attracted. And we have been very successful by speaking these lines. So can we do this? 
and they thought it was a very good idea, we'll, we'll multiply book distribution. And Prabhupada became very grave. Prabhupada said that devotional service is performed when a soul is inspired to serve Krishna. He says devotional service is not performed just by repeating some lines. He says inspire people to serve Krishna and they by their connection with Krishna will get the words to speak. He said that bhakti is three things. It's individual. Each person has their relationship with Krishna. It is voluntary. And it is meant to be spontaneous. Spontaneous doesn't mean that there is no planning and organization involved in it. Spontaneous means that it has to spring from the heart. So for each one of us, instead of trying to control others so that they do the right thing, if we help them stay connected with Krishna, then even if they make some wrong decisions, their connection with Krishna will help them draw the right lessons from the wrong decisions. And that way, each one of them can move forward in their relationship with Krishna, in their growth towards wisdom. And in that way, the world is a disturbing place, but we will disturb others less and others will disturb us less. So I'll summarize what I discussed today. I started by talking about how Krishna is saying in any relationship, if we can disturb others less and others disturb us less. So basically don't disturb or be disturbed. This will be pleasing. So, how do we do this? In that connection, we discuss what are the various ways of disturbance that might happen. It determines on what is the understanding of love that a particular person has in the relationship. It can refer to attraction and then there is harsha. It can refer to amarsha. It can refer to expectation that is thwarted. Then that leads to dejection. It can refer to that if there's a decision that is made, if it's not, and otherwise that's every small thing will keep annoying, disturbing, irritating us. And then there is overall insecurity. That may if there's no satisfaction, if there's no security, there's no safety at all in the overall state of the relationship, then there'll be by fear. So for addressing each of these, th there are various causes of disturbance, but for addressing these disturbances, we discussed how if I am anchored in my relationship with Krishna, then what will happen is, in my relationship with the other person, if there is strength here, then there will be stability in my relationship with the other person. So, and the, so this is how we can ensure that we are not disturbed by others. And then lastly, if we understand that that person has a relationship with Krishna, that I am not the master of this person, I am not the sole protector of this person. Actually, I am protecting and guiding on behalf of Krishna. Everyone has an ultimate relationship with Krishna. Then, we may want to correct here, but more important than correcting here is connecting here. So when we see that connection, we encourage that person to stay connected. Then the point is not necessarily that the person do the right thing, but the person that the relationship have the right spirit. Krishna will guide that person in due course. So they may not listen to me right now. So instead of instead of giving an instruction, it's better to give a vision an explanation of what is to be done. That way their intelligence is developed and then they, through their intelligence they connect with Krishna. And through their intelligence, even if they don't listen to us, they, when they go through some experience, through that experience they will learn and they will grow. And in this way, we can at least minimize the disturbance that we don't disturb others. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.
Are there any questions? Or we have to focus on the source. Yes, to the extent we are strongly connected with Krishna, we will get the intelligence from within. How best to how best to move forward and we'll have that stability that by which we'll have the strength we'll have the strength by which we can have the stability we'll have the wisdom by which we'll understand you know when to correct when to connect and that way we'll be able to move forward yes what krishna talks about strengthening our that the strength that anchor that comes to us that will be by our relationship with krishna so thank you very much. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki chai. Shila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki chai. Thai go.